Let's talk more about what's possible in the next few weeks on stimulus and funding the government. Joining us now is Tyler Goodspeed, acting chairman of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. Tyler, start with uh, this point in time, and, and I'm looking down now we're 300 points uh, on the Dow. We'll ask you uh, some market questions maybe a little bit later. But uh, Friday's number, where are, is a snapshot of uh, where the economy is right now? Improving? I don't know if anyone thought we'd be below 10 percent. Uh, unemployment right now. We probably have, are looking towards a pretty big GDP uh, number when it finally hits. But is there a deceleration? Is the second derivative slowing to some extent as the easy gains have been made in your view? Well, we were certainly very encouraged by the fact that the unemployment rate dropped by 1.8 percentage points down to 8.4 percent in August. That was vastly exceeding expectations. I believe the market consensus was for a more modest decline to 9.8 percent. Uh, and this was despite the labor force participation rate ticking up, which ordinarily we would expect to put upward pressure on the unemployment rate. And as you said, this was this was a vast improvement upon expectations. Just two months ago, the Congressional Budget Office, a uh, nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, was projecting an average unemployment rate during the third quarter, 14.1 percent. So this was definitely an outperformance of expectation. Uh, as as you've, you've suggested, we've regained 50 percent of the jobs lost during those horrific months of March and April. And now we, we have to get the remaining 50 percent back. And that's why the president remains committed to achieving a phase four agreement that can pass both houses of, of, of uh, Congress and he can sign into law. And you expect that uh, to, to happen because the there are hawks, uh, if there's any left, I'm talking deficit hawks, maybe in, in the, I think of the Republican Party, but you even have Democrats at, at times talking about uh, deficits. Um, I'll get mad that I phrased it that way. But, uh, I mean, it, is it necessary in your view, since the progress has been maybe faster on, on the rebound than people thought? Do we need another stimulus uh, program in your view? And do you think it will be blocked by uh, those in opposition? Uh, to, uh, to to Republicans gaining any ground in, in the upcoming elections, do you think people do you think Democrats want the economy to stay weak? Well, one thing that one point that I've been emphasizing throughout is that if one cares about long run fiscal sustainability, nothing blows a hole in the long run fiscal picture like a persistent negative output gap. And that's why we are committed to regaining full employment as quickly as possible. Uh, and actually, one of the lessons we learned from 2008, 2009 is that when you allow the, this unemployment to persist, uh, then, then temporary layoffs can become permanent, can become not in the labor force. And so that's why we've, we've been incredibly encouraged by the swiftness of the rebound from the March and April lows. And just to put this in perspective, uh, when the unemployment rate peaked at 10 percent back in October 2009, it was 27 months before we saw 8.4 percent unemployment again. We have achieved that sort of that, that decline in just one month from 10.2 percent down to 8.4 percent. Uh, and actually, we've, we've achieved a 6.3 percentage point drop in the unemployment rate from the April low in just four months. And to achieve a similar magnitude decline in the unemployment rate from its December uh, uh, from, from, from its October 2009 high, was 107 months. It actually wasn't until September 2018 that we were finally able to achieve a, an unemployment drop that low. So this was definitely, I think, a testament not only to the strength hey, of the U.S. economy heading into this crisis, but also to the right. speed and scale of the response. Tyler, there's been work, some work done on, on the, the action of the S&P and, and the effect that it has on an incumbent. Uh, and if the S&P has a good three months prior to, to a November election, a lot of time, 90 percent of the time, the incumbent is reelected. Um, I think people were shocked at how quickly the markets came back from the March lows, as, as you noted, not just the, the economy, but the markets as well. Do you think that it's possible they came back almost too quickly? Because now, starting last week, it looks like it's po I mean, nobody knows, can tell the future, but it's possible we could be in for some retrenchment because things went so far and so fast. And that could actually be problematic for the election in November. Do you think you got we went too far too fast and the timing might be off and the market peaked too soon? Well, equity markets are one economic indicator that we watch, but they're one of many. And, and as you as you saw, as we saw in recent weeks, the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 hit successive highs. I don't think it should be entirely unexpected that there should be some pause and even some, some retreat. 
Uh, but look, we are also looking at the at the real economic data. Uh, we're looking at housing data. We're looking at real retail sales. We're looking uh, at equipment investment. And I think all those data points are, are pointing to a continued strong recovery. And, uh, and, and, and yet we do remain committed to achieving a, a bipartisan legislation that the president can sign into law that expedites that recovery so that we get back to full employment as quickly as possible.